Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. I'm really using this more as just a platform to talk about something that I wanted to do for the DC fast charging site reviews that I've been doing uh, because I want to start doing more of them. I think it's important and I think it's important not just for electric vehicle users to see what's actually going on in the DC charging front and what's going to be available to them. But I think it's also important for the charging providers themselves to be getting sort of a grade or a report card on what they're actually implementing, because I'm a firm believer that what gets measured gets done. And there are certain things that seem to be a constant throughout all of the public charging providers and even for Tesla with their supercharger network where they're not really listening to, I think, a lot of user feedback and what our expectations are for certain sites. And so I wanted to set up a way of actually grading these sites that we can sort of give a comparison, but also send a message to the public charging providers of what they need to be focusing on and what they need to be working on. So just up front, before I go through the five categories, two of the things that I will not be assessing these sites on uh, first is charging costs because prices vary so much. And in a state like California, we might soon see where public charging providers are required to sell power by the kilowatt hour anyway. So all of these pricing structures, they're really easily subject to change. The other thing is uh, reliability because so much goes into reliability and a site that's really unreliable one week might be completely reliable the next week. We see this across the board, you know, Electrify America uh, with their ABB chargers is having problems with uh, the Spark EV, an older CCS equipped vehicle. Uh, but you see this, like I said, across the board, even in Europe, uh, you have the Tesla Model 3 with its CCS port having issues with the Ionity network. So those things will get ironed out, though, and they'll get fixed and corrected because those issues with compatibility are what's causing most of the reliability issues with these networks. You know, it's just not worth assessing or grading a score on that for something that could change so quickly. You get up to the date information from places like PlugShare, so it's not really a value to grade them on that. But the five categories that I will be assessing, uh, the first is accessibility. And all of these categories, you'll get a score of up to 10 out of 10, but I'm a hard grader. And so with something like accessibility, you cannot get a 10 out of 10 unless your site has a really low likelihood of being iced, blocked by internal combustion engine vehicle owners, and it has full pull through parking. That means anybody with a trailer, a 10, 20, 30 foot trailer, yeah, not very many EVs can pull right now, but when they can, that's a crucial measurement, right? And so if your site doesn't support full pull through parking, you're not going to get a 10 out of 10. So that's going to drop down your accessibility score. Obviously other things like it needs to be close to an on-ramp, off-ramp, that sort of thing. But Overall, those two factors, the icing and the full pull through parking are the things that are going to cause most sites to get a lower score. The next is amenities. Now amenities come from all the different things that you can get on the site, but you will not get a 10 out of 10 on amenities if you are lacking any of the following, which would be a full canopy cover it doesn't have to be a solar panels but that just makes sense but if you're lacking any sort of a cover or canopy for the chargers you can't get 10 out of 10. if you're lacking 24 hour a day access to a bathroom you can't get 10 out of 10. if you're lacking some sort of good lighting uh open to the public eye basically security issues you can't get a 10 out of 10. so those are all things i think these public charging providers need to consider. So that's the amenities side. The next is going to be concentration. How many chargers are there per site? We see way too many sites with one or two chargers per site. That's not acceptable, except for maybe a few random, really rural, really low traffic areas. Otherwise, you want to see more chargers per site, but there really is a cap to it. Anything more than 12 and you're not really gonna get a higher score. 
And part of the reason for that is it's my personal belief that once you hit that many chargers at a site, you're better off making a second site at a nearby location than you are expanding a site beyond 12 chargers. But a lot of that's going to depend on route and a lot of it's gonna depend on traffic. The next is location and location is how many people actually benefit from this site. So you're not gonna get a 10 out of 10 on location unless you're on a highly trafficked uh, inter uh, city route, like a freeway corridor, like Interstate 5, or if you're supporting some sort of a lower income neighborhood or an, a neighborhood that doesn't have uh, off street parking or has a lot of multi unit dwellings. Basically, uh, you need a lot of people to be benefiting from being able to access this charger. So we need to be putting a lot more thought into where we end up putting our chargers, not just whatever business will accept them. And then the final is speed. Obviously we have new standards now. Uh, Tesla has their V3 supercharger that's up to 250 kilowatts. The CCS standard now is being built out to 350 kilowatts. But beyond just the overarching speed of the site, I also want to do an assessment as to whether or not that speed is appropriate for the venue. So if you're at a site where someone's typically spending two to four hours, if you have a 25 or 35 kilowatt charger, that's not gonna ding you. However, if you're a highway stop and you have a 50 kilowatt charger, you are not gonna get 10 out of 10 for that. It's just too slow for the current vehicles and the upcoming vehicles for that purpose, right? We don't need 50 kilowatt chargers at gas stations. That's not appropriate. So let me know what you think of those scores. I'm gonna give some examples of uh, some sites that I regularly uh, use and that I've already reviewed just to give an idea of what kind of score they would see uh, and just sort of to show you that yeah I'm a pretty harsh grader so far I haven't seen a site that would get an A grade and uh, it's because most of them are missing something so I included a link to that uh, there's some notes in it so let me know what you think about whether these grades are appropriate whether you think the criteria is correct what are the things that you're really looking for in a site? Uh, what should I keep an eye out for when I'm scoring and grading these different sites that I review? Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And thank you for watching.